Welcome to the Raise with Jesus podcast, 10 minutes every day where the life of Jesus meets yours. You've got your daily Bible reading for March 15th, 2019, looking at the first portion of Acts chapter 13, the beginning of Paul's first missionary journey. Scripture records for us four missionary journeys by Paul, and Paul alludes to a fifth that that was his intent to follow through with the fifth missionary journey all the way to Spain. We don't know if he made that trip or not. We kind of presume that he did um, from what we know of church history and his probable date of martyrdom, as well as the fragments that we piece together, especially from the book of Titus and Second Timothy. Second Timothy being Paul's last letter. It seems to have been written some period after the book of Acts ends, because the book of Acts ends with Paul sitting at house arrest in Rome. And our presumption, based on the sketchy information that we've got and the allusions that we have in Scripture, is that Paul was probably released from house arrest after a while, and that he maybe went on to Spain and maybe then traveled back to visit the churches that he had started earlier. He may not have made it all the way to Spain, but we do know that he is finally caught up with, again, up by Troas, up by modern-day Constantinople, or Byzantium, whatever the name happens to be. And it's at, at Troas there he is finally taken captive again for the same charge of subverting the Jewish religion, and he's brought to Rome as a prisoner. And it's in that context, in that setting, that he writes Second Timothy, his final letter to Timothy, And he says, please, when you come, um, first of all, I'm not alone. (laughs) Luke is with me. And then he says, when you come, please bring along the scrolls and especially the parchments and my cloak from Troas. Because he's probably sitting in this this cold and damp dungeon in Rome is basically how, how you can picture it. Paul didn't know exactly that that was how his ministry would end up. But in Acts chapter 13, um, probably six to eight years after his conversion on the road to Damascus, he's serving in the public ministry up in Antioch um, by Syria. Um, It's a different Antioch from Antioch up in Turkey, modern-day Turkey. And he's serving there with Barnabas at the church there. And we begin in Acts chapter 13. Now in the church at Antioch, there were some prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Menaean, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then, after they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them off. So they were sent out by the Holy Spirit and went down to Seleucia. From there they sailed to Cyprus. When they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues, They also had John as their assistant. When they had traveled through the whole island as far as Paphos, they came across a sorcerer, a Jewish false prophet, whose name was Bar-Jesus. He was with the proconsul, Sergius Paulus, who was an intelligent man. The proconsul summoned Barnabas and Saul and wanted to hear the word of God. Elymas the sorcerer, for that is what his name means, opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul away from the faith. But Saul, who is also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit and looked straight at him, said, You are full of every kind of deceit and fraud, you son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness. Will you never stop twisting the straight paths of the Lord? Now look, the hand of the Lord is against you. You will be blind, and for a time you will be unable to see the sun. Immediately mist and darkness came over him, and he went around looking for someone to lead him by the hand. When the proconsul saw what happened, he believed. He was amazed at the teaching of the Lord. Paul and his companions set sail from Paphos and came to Perga in Pamphylia. John, however, left them and returned to Jerusalem. This is the word of our Lord. So Barnabas and Paul, uh, also called Saul, Saul being his Jewish name, Paul being his Roman name, or kind of like his middle name. We don't know a whole lot about Paul, except that he considers himself a Hebrew of Hebrews from the tribe of Benjamin, and he's a Roman citizen, which means that he was probably born into citizenship, meaning that his parents were citizens, or at least his father was, which also means that at some point in his own ancestry, one of those one of those ancestors became a Roman citizen either either by purchasing citizenship and 
going through a long and involved process, uh, maybe by maybe by a bribe, um, or maybe citizenship was bestowed on that ancestor for something that they had done, or for something that the city had done where they lived. At any rate, Paul was born into citizenship, and Paul is kind of his middle name. It's not a complete change of names. He was still named Saul. He was always named Paul as well. But Luke, from now on, basically, especially from this con- this contact with Sergius Paulus, Luke focuses on the name Paul and uses the name Paul, perhaps maybe highlighting the fact that his ministry to the Gentiles has really begun. So anyway, um, the, the church at Antioch places their hands on them and sends them off or commissions them. This isn't ordination. They're already serving the public ministry. Um, they have already been, been recognized as ministers of the gospel in the public ministry of the word. But now the church commissions them and sends them out on this, on this mission trip at the prompting of the Lord. Verse 2. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then after they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them off. This fasting. It's not a requirement, um, and it's not, it's not part and parcel of how you become a Christian. And at the same time, it is part of the regular Christian practice. Jesus said that in the days when he was taken from his disciples, then they would fast. As a part of regular Christian practice, most broadly, fasting would be just the the refraining from or the denial of some sort of pleasure, <laughs> such as food, as, a, as one example, uh, for a time, as a reminder that God is the one who provides all that we need. Just consider our gospel lesson from the first Sunday in Lent, Jesus in the wilderness fasting for 40 days, and he was hungry, and he says to the devil, Man does not live on bread alone, but on, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And so fasting is a practice. Um, perhaps it's fallen out of favor, and it's a, a little, a little woo-woo for us Americans. But at the same time, there may be some benefit to it. If it interests you, check out the show notes for the link to a to a paper on the topic that I've read a couple of times. It's actually quite good. Anyway, so they they head down to the coast, they sail over to uh, Cyprus, that island kind of close to right there in the Mediterranean, probably the area that Barnabas was from. They encounter Bar-Jesus, this Jewish false prophet who was a sorcerer. The name Bar-Jesus, just a very normal name, meaning son of Joshua. Uh, Joshua, a very common common name, and just Jesus is kind of the the Greek version of Joshua. Bar, meaning son, um, such as Bar Mitzvah is is a celebration for one's son as he um, kind of attains manhood in the Jewish culture. So Bar-Jesus, the son of Joshua, is a false prophet on the island. And he was with the proconsul, verse 7, Sergius Paulus, who was an intelligent man. The proconsul summoned Barnabas and Saul and wanted to hear the word of God. So Sergius Paulus isn't exactly Cornelius. He's not this, this devout believer who is fasting and praying and, um, and who really knows his Savior and just or really knows his his Jewish belief and really just needs some explanation on it. Sergius Paulus is a, a little bit of a politician and he's curious about these men who just came to town who have been walking through the entire island and preaching about this Jesus. Verse 8, Elemas the sorcerer, his nickname, the sorcerer or Elemas, um, opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul away from the faith. And Paul hits him with the some of the strongest words in in scripture you are full of every kind of deceit and fraud you son of the devil you enemy of all righteousness will you never stop twisting the paths of the lord we might think paul you should really tone it down just a little bit you're new here um you shouldn't speak so strongly because maybe he, you know sergius paulus is misled and he's just doing his best or rather elemas is just misled and he's just doing his best but paul recognizes that faith is at stake. Paul cares enough about Sergius Paulus and everyone who might come under his influence to say that we don't want we don't want false doctrine and poor practice impinging on the work that God wants to do here. 
We want to keep false ideas out of the way so that God can accomplish what he wants to do. And we want to carry this out well so that so that we carry so that we stay out of the way of the work that God is trying to do here. The church that Jesus is trying to build here through his word. And can you think of another time that somebody who was opposed to Jesus was struck with blindness? Somebody who was maybe on his way to Damascus struck with blindness facing Jesus. Paul still wants, still wants this Elemas, this bar Jesus, son of Joshua to repent. And the proconsul sees the blindness. And when he sees that, he recognizes and listens to the word that Paul had spoken. And at least he was amazed at the teaching of the Lord, perhaps becomes a Christian. So as we wrap up today, remembering and talking a little bit about fasting, again, check the show notes for a paper on the topic, um, talking about devotion to the Lord and devotion to the truth, and really it's a care for souls. I wanted to thank you for spending a few minutes with Jesus every day through this podcast and to think about how we can bring the life of Jesus to more people because Jesus wants to continue building his church here. And there are some things that we can do to get out of the way, um, whether, you know, making sure that practice is as good as we can do. The, the choices that we make in ministry are the good choices and the best choices we can make with our limited understanding. But the primary way and the only way in which Jesus builds his church is continued contact with the word of God. So rather than just listening, think also about who you might send a link to this podcast to and join us for Bible class at a time that fits your schedule. We've got a couple of, you know, Sunday morning, Tuesday evening, uh, Friday afternoon. And if there are other opportunities that fit your schedule and other ways that we can bring the life of Jesus to more people through this word, tell me about it. You can find us Sunday morning, 2250 South Holland, Savannah Road, Maumee. God bless your day.